round this to about 36.1 kilograms. Okay, that would be my mean average. Now remember, a good average is supposed to be pretty close to the center. Now where's the center? Well, if I look here, you're looking for sort of the center would be pretty close to where the highest bar in your, in the, in your, there's my center, right? And that is pretty close to 36.1. We can see visually that the average, the mean average, in this case at least, is pretty close to the highest bar. Uh, it's right on pretty much the center. And also it's kind of where the most of my dots are in my, in my dot plot. I can see the center is pretty close to that, um, to that, to the kind of the biggest grouping of dots. And that's kind of how you want to think about it. A good average should be close to the center in your graph. Okay? So we're going to say that the average weight of these bricks is about 36.1 kilograms. Now let's give the formal definition of a mean. Uh, a mean average is usually the center or average used for normal quantitative data and it balances the distances. Sometimes we call it uh, as a balancing point for distances. So it, it balances out the distances. Now what does that actually mean? A lot of people know how to calculate a mean, but a lot of people don't really know what the mean does. So the mean really balances the distances. So think of it this way. If we looked at every number below the mean, so if we look here, all of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the first seven numbers here are all below the mean. They're all below 36.1. If I see how far are all of them from the mean, so if I did like 3 minus 36.1, I'd get negative 33.1. 30 minus 36.1 is negative 6.1, so 30 is like 6.1 kilograms below the mean. 31 was 5.1 kilograms below the mean, and so on. These negative differences... Now, if I added up all of those differences, I'd get about negative 46.7. Now, look at the numbers that are, these five numbers that are above the mean. They, these five here, if, let's see how far they are from the mean. So, 37 minus 36.1 would be positive 0 0.9. That means that the 37 is about 0.9 kilograms above the mean. 41 is 4.9 kilograms above the mean and so on. 70 is 33.9 kilograms above the mean. If you added these up, it should come out to about the same as the numbers below the mean. That's what it means that the mean balances distances. The, number, the distance of numbers below the mean would equal the distance for numbers above the mean. Now, rounding errors come into play here, and I rounded this number quite a bit. If I had kept it at 36.083 instead of 36.1 when I did these calculations, this probably would be closer. Uh, the bottom sum was negative 46.7, the top sum was 46.5. Usually they're supposed to be exact, they will be exactly equal to each other if you didn't round. The reason why they're not is just because I, I rounded. But you can see how these are supposed to balance out each other. They're supposed to be equal. By the way, that also means if you add up the differences, if you take every single number in the data set and subtract the mean and add them up, it'll usually almost always add up to zero because the bottom negative numbers will be uh, the same distance as the top positive numbers. And if you add those up, you get about zero. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. So the mean balances the distances. So we've seen here that the shape of this data is normal. We refer to it as normal. And the average, we would use the mean, that's the, the name of the statistic, and the number was, the average was 36.1 kilograms. Okay, so that's what we got so far. But if you, if, if all you do is, is analyze data, is take an average, you're really missing the boat. You're really missing the point. Um, you can have, you know, different data sets that have the same average that are very, very different in other characteristics. So we never want to just stop by looking at just the average. That's not really what we want to do in statistics. We want to go beyond that. The one variable we really like to measure is the spread or the amount of variability in the data set. 
So we want to measure the variability or the spread, right? So how much, how much spread uh, do we have? So um, think of it this way, right? I might have, uh, let's suppose I compared two classes, two of my statistics classes. And one of my, both of my statistics classes uh, took, uh, both, let's see, both of my ex uh, statistics classes took an exam. And let's suppose both of them had an 80 average for the exam. And I'm looking at these and I'm like, are these classes really similar? Probably not. Like maybe this class, um, everybody in the, in the class was between 75 and 85. They had a very small spread. They were very consistent. Um, they're very easy to predict, kind of think of it that way. Uh, a smaller spread will have less error later on if you're doing some kind of prediction, you're, you're the, the amount of error on those predictions uh, would be less. So if, if all my numbers were really close together, maybe all the people in the class got between a 75 and an 85 on the exam, then that, I, that would be a very small spread. But then maybe I had this other class that also had an 80 average, but they had uh, exam scores from 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s and 100s, and they're all over the place. They still, they still got an 80 average, but they're much more spread out. Okay, that means the more spread out it is, that means they're less consistent. It's hard for me to predict what the class is going to do. They're all over the place, right? And if I do try to predict what's going to happen with the class, um, I could be off by a lot. I could have a lot of error in my predictions. That's how you want to think of spread. Spread's a very important number. In fact, in a lot of ways, statistics is really the analysis of variability. Spread is one of the most, probably is the most important um, statistic we, we calculate, more important than the average. So think about spread as always a very important type. Now, what spread is accurate? Again, different spreads go with different shapes. So for normal data, data that's normal has this sort of bell shape like this, we use something called the standard deviation. Standard deviation or S would be the letter sometimes you'll see in stat books or formulas. So a standard deviation is the sort of the most accurate measure of spread for normal data. Again, the thing is that it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really um, um, work if you don't have normal data. Okay, so standard deviation was really designed for this kind of shape. But how do you calculate standard deviation? Well, standard deviation is how far typical numbers are from the mean. So think of it as the typical distance from the mean. Okay, that's a good way of thinking of standard deviation. So typical distance from the mean. So let's go back to here and we'll kind of I'll walk you through the calculation. So um, what I kind of want to know is on average, how far are all these numbers from the mean? That's really kind of what standard deviation measures. Now, you may think, uh, well, why don't we just look at these distances right here, these when I did x minus x bar. Again, the problem is that the numbers below the mean gave a negative distance, and the numbers above the mean gave a positive distance, and if I add them up, I get zero. That's not going to help me. That's not going to give me the average distance. Distance can't be zero. So, so now I'm looking at... Well, I shouldn't say distance can't be zero. It could be zero if all the numbers were the same number. But, uh, but this, is, this is definitely, in this case, we shouldn't have a, a distance of zero. So what we do instead, in stats, we're very big on um, squaring things. So we call it a sum of squares calculation. It's very popular, very famous in statistics. We, we basically square all the distances to get rid of the negatives. So negative 33.1, we square it, we get positive 1095.61. Um, negative 6.1. Uh, squared is positive 37.21. If you notice, these are sometimes called the squares, the squares of the differences. Okay, so I'm basically just squaring each of these numbers. I'm squaring all of them, even the positive ones I'm squaring. And then I'm going to add up the squares. And when you do that, that's a very famous statistic. It's sometimes called a sum of squares. Sum of squares is very famous in stats. A lot of things use a sum of squares calculation. So a sum of squares 
The, the formula would be uh, x minus x bar, so the x is the number in the data set, minus the mean, and you're squaring it. And then this, again, this big E looking thing in front of it, the summation notation means add it up. So this just means add up the squares. And if we add up all these squares, we get this number 2,370.92. Now my numbers are off a little bit because I rounded a, a lot. I've used a lot of rounding error, so I'm going to have some rounding error in my overall answer. So how do we calculate standard deviation? So standard deviation is the, the square root of the sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. So here's my sum of squares that I just calculated over there. And n minus 1 is sometimes referred to as degrees of freedom. Huh, degrees of freedom. Well, how does that work? Uh, degrees of freedom is actually very famous, and it can be different in different circumstances. For one data set, it's usually n minus 1. So think of it this way. Okay, let's suppose you're in a class, right, and you've taken five exams. And these five exams are going to determine what grade you get in your class, right? So suppose you have five exams. And so you're looking at these exams, and maybe your first exam you got an 89, and your second exam you got a 94, and your third exam you got an 86, and your fourth exam you got a 92. Can't you sort of calculate what you need to get on that last exam to get your A in the class. I mean, if you know you need a 90 or above on your on your on your exam to uh, I'm sorry, a 90 or above in the class to get an A, can't you sort of calculate what you need to get on that last exam? In other words, the fourth the first four exams have variability. They can be different numbers, but that last exam in a way is fixed if you know the mean, right? If if we know the mean average has to be 90, I can calculate what I need to get on the on the last exam. So of the five exams, four of them have variability. And that's called degrees of freedom. So that's referred to as degrees of freedom. And that's why in the variability calculation, the spread calculation, they divide by n minus 1, not n. So that, that's sort of where that comes from. So in our case, uh, our sum of squares was 2,370.92. We calculated it right there. And then we're going to divide by 12 minus 1, or 11. Remember, there was 12 numbers in the data set, so 12 minus 1 is 11. 